Hey guys, hope you're all doing well. Now, for today's video, I wanted to talk about an alternate ending to the third Jurassic Park movie that not too many people talk about. This was a very early draft for JP3 that would have merged some of the ideas that Steven Spielberg had for the Alan Grant character with a more explosive ending that we unfortunately never got to see. Today, we're going to be going over the United States military's attack on Isla Sorna and how Dr. Grant would have actually been left on that island in the midst of all of it. Now, for anyone that as a Jurassic Park fan worth their salt, they already know all about the troubled production of Jurassic Park 3 and how the original trilogy kind of had its trajectory thrown off course with not only the scripting problems with that film, but with the changed ending of the last. With Steven Spielberg opting to go to San Diego at the end of The Lost World in order to beat Roland Emmerich's Godzilla and the remake of Mighty Joe Young to the punch before they took their own monster movies to the city. So with this change in direction came a radical change in where the original Jurassic Park trilogy was supposed to end, with everyone kind of assuming that the dinosaurs escaping on the mainland would have been the big story for JP3 to follow. Of course, that eventually wound up being something that Jurassic Park 5, Fallen Kingdom, was saying was going to be a part of Dominion, but that didn't really happen either, and instead it was, uh, well, Jurassic World Dominion was what it was, wasn't it? But let's go back to the original Jurassic Park trilogy. Well, with these changes in direction came some ideas from Spielberg that a lot of people thought would have been pretty cool. The main one being Alan Grant actually living on Isla Sorna after it's revealed to have had dinosaurs living on it at the end of the Lost World, and for the paleontologist to start doing his own research on the island studying those animals. Of course, this story was eventually scrapped in favor of something far more elaborate that was also scrapped, but at one point in time, this Robinson Crusoe-inspired idea almost made it back into Jurassic Park 3 via another scrapped ending that would have more than likely set up Jurassic Park 4, stay with me here, had this version of the movie been made and became a hit. Now, the following information that I'm going to be going over today comes from the Jurassic Park Ultimate Visual History Guide that came out recently. And I know it got a little confusing there, but stay with me here, guys. You can find a detailed breakdown of the first three movies and how they were made inside of that book. As for Jurassic Park 3 and how that movie was changed, you'll notice that many of the characters here have different names in this version of the story, with Paul Kirby being named Paul Roby and the boy, Eric, being given the name Miles, while other characters characters uh, aren't even in the final version having major roles in this draft as well. But anyways, to quote the book, In this draft, the story continues to switch back and forth to mainland Costa Rica. There, a character named Finch visits a village where a dinosaur has supposedly been captured, only to find a broken cage and several dead villagers. Police also encounter frightened fishermen who have netted a headless carcass. Simone identifies the corpse as a pteranodon at the very moment Grant's group unwittingly enters a giant aviary and encounters the terrifying winged creatures for the first time. Miles is snatched by a pteranodon, which drops him in its nest of hungry babies. Billy takes a parasail recovered from Rick's remains and jumps into the canyon to save Miles. In the air, they're attacked by four of the winged beasts. Miles survives, but Billy dies at the claws of an enormous pteranodon. This was revealed as some sort of gigantic alpha mammoth pteranodon in the book. The survivors take to a barge and head to the engine marina, where they encounter the Spinosaurus, which bites through the boat's wheelhouse. Grant's group gets trapped in a giant cage that falls in the water. Miles manages to escape and fire a flare at the dinosaur, igniting a spilled slick of gasoline. The creature retreats, but the danger's not over. Although satellite footage shows the Roby's wrecked plane on Isla Sorna, the U.S. government chooses to send in A-10 Warthog fighter jets to wipe out the dinosaur population. Bombs are dropped, causing a dinosaur stampede, but a pilot spots Roby on a ridge and aborts the attack. After the group is saved, the mission's commander, Colonel Peters, wants to finish the job, basically going back and wiping out the dinosaurs. But Grant refuses to leave the island. He's last seen running into the jungle, recalling Spielberg's Robinson Crusoe idea. These final scenes led to the film gaining an apocalyptic new title, Jurassic Park Extinction, a name that was later rejected. The thought from the studio, in my memory, is that Steven agreed was that it just sounded too final, as if it was the end of the franchise franchise comments Joe Johnston. It was also a little misleading. Extinction for who? The dinosaurs? The human race? 
Alan Grant? Eventually, it was switched to something much simpler. No one was particularly fond of naming the movie Jurassic Park 3, but you all knew what that meant. Now look, I have no idea what the point of having Alan Grant left alone on the island was supposed to be, other than the fact that they could have used Grant's dinosaur cynicism in Jurassic Park 3 as some sort of character arc for him wanting to study and love the animals again after the military starts killing them off, but either way, it would have been a way different ending to the movie and one that would have helped set up Jurassic Park 4 in a pretty interesting way. Still, I find it hard to believe that Alan Grant would just run away into the jungle just so he can continue to study the animals without the help of, you know, any outside human protection or guidance because this is a Jurassic Park movie we're talking about here and the whole point of tension and terror comes from not being able to control the dinosaurs. So yeah, it's kind of a crazy decision to make on Grant's part. I mean, the whole point of these movies is you gotta get off the island and he's like, no, nah, I'm just gonna stay and maybe I'll die, who knows? But look, I will admit that it would be one, it would be an ending that would be interesting to follow up on in the next film had Jurassic Park 4 gone in that direction. But yeah, this was supposed to be somewhat of a predication to the death of Isla Sorna via a firebombing. Now, they don't wipe out the dinosaurs in this Jurassic Park extinction draft, but they do start to bomb a lot of them and it causes a gigantic stampede of the animals, which kind of reminds me of some of the stuff that happened in the fifth movie, Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom, where they were worried about all the dinosaurs dying in the first trailer of that film. I can still remember when it came out. I was so optimistic about that trilogy. I was so excited to see where it would go. You had Ian Malcolm saying life will find a way and the dinosaurs running at the edge of that cliff before the lava and cloud of smoke was about to hit them. It was pretty cool, but it does remind me, you know, this description of the draft and the dinosaurs dying via a stampede and fire. That's kind of the imagery I'm getting here. It's just that Alan Grant was being left alone in the I guess they just were like, nah, leave him. He wants to go. We got to get the other survivors out of here. So very strange way to end a movie, I will say. Now, again, you have to understand that if they had gone with this version, it was kind of a way to just do Jurassic Park 3 just so they could set up Jurassic Park 4. And ironically, I guess the idea they wanted to go for with Jurassic Park 4, Alan Grant living alone on the island, Robinson Crusoe style, was one of the early versions and ideas they had for Jurassic Park 3. So kind of funny. It's like they got to make one movie to make another. Ultimately, none of this happened. But it is a very interesting moment to kind of look into how these Jurassic Park sequels are made. And it does make you think that the sequels at this point, after The Lost World, they started to run in circles with the story. But... I don't necessarily think they were out of ideas. In fact, it looks like they had so many ideas for a dinosaur attack movie that they didn't really know what direction to put it in, which is one of the reasons why I think Jurassic Park 3 not being on the mainland and being restricted to Site B is still all over the place in terms of action set pieces and ideas. These ideas are really good. The aviary sequence where the pteranodons like come down through the fog and attack people, I think that stuff's great. The idea of an airplane attack is interesting, a dinosaur battle, people running away from velociraptors in an engine complex. This stuff makes for very interesting set pieces, but the fact of the matter is that when they threw out the script, they had to tool the characters, the costuming, everything they had going on, like they had to channel it around what Stan Winston's crew and the creature effects and set department did with the already finished version of Jurassic Park 3's action sequence, they had to make a story around action. And that's kind of the opposite direction you want to take everything in. But yeah, I, I do think that the choice to actually stay away from the mainland in Jurassic Park 3 kind of made for a very short experience that could have been really interesting, especially with this draft where they were going to set up Jurassic Park 4, which again, their idea for Jurassic Park 4 at that time was just another scrapped version of Jurassic Park 3. So you can tell they had a lot of ideas at this point in time in the franchise. And it's weird. They were just trying to shove everything into one film and save what was left over for the next film. And it's interesting, man how all of that happened. Now that we've seen Jurassic World Dominion, Jurassic Park 6, whatever you want to call it, I do think that they could have gone in a much more threatening direction with dinosaurs in the mainland because truth be told Jurassic Park 6 kind of ran in place in the way a lot of us felt Jurassic Park 3 was running in place back in 2001. They didn't really further the story after the end of The Lost World or Fallen Kingdom which means that we're kind of stuck with these 
ends of trilogies where they're just kind of running on a treadmill and away from the big thing that we thought they were going to run towards, which is, yeah, it, it really is dinosaurs breaking out, attacking people on the mainland, possibly going in a Planet of the Apes direction. But they did not really just do that. I still don't know why, but even back during the Jurassic Park 3 days, you can see that they wanted to stay on the island for as long as possible, which is interesting. And I do find the scrapped draft of Jurassic Park 3 that would have led into Alan Grant by himself on the island in JP4, presumably had this version been successful. I find all that stuff to be very interesting. But anyways, guys, these are all just my thoughts on a little excerpt from the Jurassic Park Ultimate Visual History Guide on the third movie. If you're a fan of that film and its final version or any of the other movies, I'd love to hear what you think of this idea and how it would have played out if this was the version of the story that Joe John Johnston went with. It's a little crazy and a little different from what we got, but ultimately I do think it would have been pretty fun had they gone for it and really shot for the fences and made a home run out of the idea of Alan Grant just staying behind on the island to study dinosaurs. I know this was just an idea Spielberg had for JP3 at one point in time, but for some reason this draft wanted to build up to it for Jurassic Park 4 or whatever they called the next one, I guess. Anyways, whatever your own thoughts and opinions on this idea happen to be, I'd love to hear all of them in the comments down below. Now before I go, I'd like to thank all of my game wardens and engine executives, as well as all of my park workers and engine hunters as well. You've all helped my channel immensely and I'm incredibly grateful for all of that support. Now I'd like to thank you all for watching today's video and hope that you enjoyed the content. If you feel like I deserve it, I'd appreciate the like and hope that you all consider subscribing. I'll see you all in the next video guys and as always, take it easy.